So those mind-expanding activities that Wendy Roberts talked about, brain games and so on, well, they also include one that I think all of us have been engaging in since childhood, namely reading. Um, but the fact is that reading, too, is being dramatically transformed by advances in IT and artificial intelligence. And I think most of you know that the sector in which I work, media, is one of those that has been most deeply impacted and disrupted by the IT revolution. Our next spotlight is entitled, The Way We Read Has Changed and Big Data is Responsible. And it will be delivered by a senior manager with what some people have called the Spotify of the magazine business, namely Readly. It's an app in which an, an all-you-can-read service that won the PPA App of the Year Award at its launch three years ago, and it has now expanded to 50 countries. It is a great pleasure to welcome Ranj Begley. She is the Managing Director of Readly UK. And uh, take it away, Ranj. Thanks. So firstly, I'd like to say what an amazing experience it's been here today and quite a humbling experience for me because I'm listening to all you wonderful women talking about how you're changing the world. So I think I'm going to be like the, the light relief after lunch. So um, I'll, I'll kick off straight away. Um, before I start, I want to kind of get you, I want to guess, basically put into context how magazine reading has changed and the three mind states when you look at magazine reading. So if we look at the first graphic, what, this is what we call in the magazine world catch-up time, or I call it headless chicken time. So typically, this will happen between 6 a.m. and noon, and what happens there is you're getting ready for work, you're looking at social media, you're catching up with your emails, etc., and it's absolutely crazy mental busy. And it's time that you're, you're, you're just trying to get ready for the day and get, get started. The second graphic that we've got there is called focus time. Now, this is where you're going to be the least time, or most, should I say, time deprived. Now, this is where you're either in this state, presenting, you're sat in a meeting, you're preparing for the evening, and you're, you're absolutely super busy. This is what, I guess, the, the, um, the Facebooks of the world would call lean-in time. We're focused on what we're doing. And then you have downtime, which is escapism. So you go home, you cook the dinner, you're picking up your kids from school, etc. And you're watching TV, you're switching from multiple devices, you're reading magazines, whether they be print, whether they be digital, and you're getting ready for bed, which is the most important thing. Now, the reason why all of this has changed over the last few years is because well, it's one of two things. The first reason is that we are now very much a time-poor society. We're just, everybody's crazy busy, even if you're sat at home and you're employed, you're still busy. And the second reason is that we actually have so much digital content, so much content, regardless of what, what state it's in, and it's absolutely bamboozling. So somewhere down here, through those, through those t uh, three mind states, we've got to fit in Readly. And how are we doing that? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Readly. I don't want it to be too much of a, a, a company plug, but we have over 2,000 magazines on the platform. 55,000 issues on the platform. So that is current issues and back issues, 400 plus magazine publishers, and we actually have 658 magazines in the UK. Now, the reason why I mention the UK is because they're English titles and people read English content across the world. Um, we're in four key markets. Sweden is our head office, and I run the UK and Ireland office, and then we have an office here in Berlin, and a very teeny weeny little office in the US. Um, as, as Melinda said, we're available in 50 territories worldwide, so you can read on Readly in 50 territories. And we're very proud of our iOS App Store rating of four and a half stars. It's actually five in the UK. Uh, excuse me if I'm speaking very fast, because I can see the ticker going there. So, <laughs> so it's, a bit, it's a bit daunting. OK, so top features within Readly. Um, for 7.99 in the UK, or for 9.99 euros in in Europe, you can have it up to five devices per household. So you can share it with your family. As Melinda mentioned, it is like Spotify, it's like Netflix, so you can set up your own profiles. The Swedes are very, very, very passionate about family reading, about reading together as a, as a, as a family, basically. 
It goes without saying, it's lightning fast. You can stream an issue through within seven seconds. So it's based on um, streaming and downloading technology. So if you don't have Wi-Fi and you streamed your issue through, then you can read it offline. For me, somebody like me, if I'm going on holiday, I'll stream through the entire back catalogue of Marie Claire and then read it on the plane. As soon as I hit a Wi-Fi connection, we at Readly will be able to track everything, you're going, everything that you've read. And that's what I'm going to talk about in a minute. You can actually bookmark and you can share articles. I love this function because I love sending my husband little recipes. Oh, I'd like to have this for dinner tonight. And then I can just send it through to him and then he can go out and do the shopping as he does. Um, you can manage what your children read as well. And as I've said already, the, the sort of sharing up to five devices and the personal content part is, is super important because if you go and hit Top Gear, it's going to recommend like-minded titles for you and it will also throw in a wild card. So it could be, I don't know, mother and baby or some, something random like that. So it stimulates your consumption. And if you want to, during the escape, escapism period, you can go in and you can do crosswords and Sudoku puzzles, etc. But my favorite function within Readly is the smart search function. So this is, this is something that we've actually pulled together from the data that we have. So within the smart search function, you could do a search across 55,000 titles, or you could do it across genre, or you could do it within magazines. So if I was to put in there Theresa May or Kim Kardashian, completely poles apart, I it would bring up every single article related to either Theresa May or Kim Kardashian. So you're never so short of stuff to read. This is just a very quick slide to show you the type of magazines that we've got on the platform. So we do business titles, everything from Fast Company to Entrepreneur to Cosmopolitan to Top Gear. And if you're into sort of really niche subjects, we cover everything from your chickens to dog world. So again, like I say, you cannot be short of any uh, reading material. Our audience. Um, so this changes and it varies from territory to territory. Now, this is predominantly based within the UK. 55% of our readership is male. What we've found is men tend to dig deeper into their pockets and are prepared to pay early adopters of technology, but it's the women that are reading. So 45% of them, and, and this, this is actually based on, on the number of subscribers. So they're the ones that are actually going in and reading. Our age range is, as you can see, very wide, 35 to 60. And again, this is not to say that we don't have the millennials that are going in and snacking on content, but one of the things that we've found is that our demographic like long-form curated content. They like to take time out, they want to read. Um, affluent de demographic in terms of 40 plus, so ABC ones there, Readly is actually for the mainstream consumer. It's there for, for everyday use. And that's what our number shows there. The 40% of Readly subscribers actually dive into the app every single day. That number is on par with Netflix. We've done a lot of research on Spotify, all the sort of various recurring revenue models that we've got out there. So, and we're very proud of that because, as you all know, Netflix has been around for donkey's years, and we've only been around for about three and a half, or three in the UK at least. So, just three more stats before I move on to the case study. So, first one I want to mention is 22 minutes. That is the average reading time per magazine. So that's track time globally. 90% of, of our customers are actually still reading on tablets or phablets. And I think that, well, I think I know, it's partly down to the way the app is served, the way the platform is served. So you can literally flick through the app, it's beautiful technology, and you can read as if you were reading a lovely glossy magazine. That 10% that, that we have on smartphones at the moment, we're hoping to see an increase on that because we've only just mobile optimized our, our app. So now you can go in and you can read in short form and in article form within, the, with, within your smartphone. And the last step I'm going to actually mention from this slide is 18% of our readership actually read back issue material, which shows that there is significant appetite out there for archive material. It, it's super, super important. And this also makes the publishers money. You know, it's money for old rope for them. They've got hundreds and thousands of old magazines sat in a warehouse somewhere, all rotting and collecting dust. Here, they're making money from it. So that's enough of my stats. And I'll move on to the, uh, to the case study. And I decided to use psychologies as a case study because I thought it'd be really apt for this audience. Um, I was going to say the Thinking Woman's magazine, but I can, 
see a man right in front of me, so, <laughs> so it's up for you as well. There you go. So, so we'll dig right into that. So we're just focusing on psychologies, and I will kind of like dig deeper into some of the issues here. So the asterisk that you see on the, on, just on the, on, the, on the mark there, that was the launch issue for psychologies. Psychologies is a British-based magazine, and they were a little bit slow on the, on the uptake, purely because Readly made them really, really nervous. It's, it is a disruptive business model. It does make publishers feel really twitchy. The question that I get time and time again is, are you going to do what, Block, oh, what Netflix sorry, did to Blockbuster? I'm not going to answer that question here. It would be our ultimate goal, but then there you go. So you can see when they first launched the magazine, they had just shy of 1,000 readers on the, on the Readly platform. Then their first spike came along when the Benedict Cumberbatch issue was launched. So he, he, you know, he did all right, actually. And there's always been a long debate between the publisher and the editor about whether female celeb covers sell or outweigh the, the, um, the male celeb covers. And we've done a case study on that as well, and we passed it on to psychologies. Then we had, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Charlize Theron. Theron. She then actually beat um, J uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, just slightly, but she had, a, she had a slightly higher spike than he did. And then the issues kind of carried on going until we get to the Gwen Stefani issue. She took a complete nosedive. Now, this could be due to the time of, and I don't have all the data here with me because we're just doing a snapshot of the file. This could be down to the articles. It could be down to a quiet period. There's a number of contributing factors as to why that issue took a dive, as opposed to the one that's taken a massive spike up there, which is the Felicity Jones issue. Just a show of hands, who knows who Felicity Jones is? Not many people. I didn't know who she was. <laughs> so she is, I thought she was an up-and-coming actress, and she is. She is, um, she's, uh, the force is behind her. She's in the new Star Wars movie, and she's out there fighting with the stormtroopers. And this just goes to show how valuable brand influence is on magazine covers. So you can see the spike there. You can see the volume of readers that we've actually generated for that particular issue. And I'll dig a little bit deeper into that so you'll be able to see what's happening there. So for the Felicity Jones issue, we had just over 3,000 readers. 20% of those readers were actually male. 79% of them were female. The amount of men that we get on Readly that read female titles is phenomenal. The amount of times I've caught my husband reading Hello! magazine and then he quickly turns over, it's, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. I'm only looking at the pictures, that's what he says. So, <laughs> so, so and we have all of that data. And, and also, I think Readly creates the Kindle effect. I don't know in Germany, but definitely in the UK, a few years ago when everybody was reading Fifty Shades of Grey on the train on their Kindle, Nobody knew what was going on. This creates the same impact. You can read whatever you want to read, and people haven't got a clue. Um, so the average time for this particular issue was 22 minutes and 30 seconds. And if you look at the spikes across on the demographic split, we can break it down by men versus women on the, on the actual age bracket there. So the 55 to 64-year-olds, 700 of those were women, and 200, I think, yeah, just 200 of those were men. So, what were they looking at? Or where should I say were they reading? So there's a heat map there. Now, if you go back to the original Mind State slide, you can see where, during the day, people are reading. What happens on Readly is that people stream their issues through in the morning. They wake up, they tap on all the issues they want. Within seven to 10 seconds, the issues are on. They then either read them during their commute, or the bulk of them are read in the evening when they're sat there with a glass of wine and just chilling out and taking it easy. Where people are reading is really interesting. So as I say, it's a UK-based title. 70% of the readership are based in the UK. But only 3% of them are based in the States. Um, a fascinating 16% of them are Swedish, and 7% of them are based in Germany. And we can track this down into real granular level, but again, for the purpose of this exercise, it's, it's really just a, an aggregated view of the data. I'm really out on time now. So, 
Just to summarize all of this, complex reader profile, which you know, uh, richness of archive I've already mentioned, and the two bottom points I just want to mention here are the best read articles. So we can track it right to granular level. The most read article within the magazine was Sail into the Known, which was about high profile individuals and how they deal with uncertainty. And the best read um, ad, or the advertorial, should I say, was something called Ibiza Calm. So it's tracked right down to granular level. What do they do after they're finished reading psychologies? This is the really interesting one. So they go in and they read all of these titles, but then they also go in and dip into Autocar. Now, that could be those 200 men, or it could be women who are genuinely interested in the new McLaren. Again, this is just a very quick snapshot. I'm talking as fast as I can. One slide to go. Right, so just to, just to summarize the whole thing, really. I mean, we talk about big data, everybody talks about data, but we really are seriously driven by it. You know, we have to, we have to utilize our data pool to improve the Readly user experience. It helps us shape the editorial product. And I think the third point, the, the, the third and fourth point are really important to us. We need to get that, that stickiness. We need to get our readers engaged so that when they think about reading, they're thinking Readly. And that is super, super important for us. And the last point, because I know there's lots of investors here, I have, invest <laughs> I have investors breathing down my neck, so it's a numbers game. We have to get our subscription numbers up, really, so that's what it boils down to. And that's it from me. Thank you.